Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Those are the words that the priest says right before we receive communion. They're based on the words that we hear in today's gospel, where John the Baptist introduces his disciples to the Messiah and says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But what does that mean? Why does John the Baptist call Jesus the Lamb of God? And, and how is it that the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world? First, must have been shocking to John the Baptist's disciples that John the Baptist would call the one that he was saying was the Messiah the Lamb of God. Because for those disciples, the image they had of the Messiah, the image that comes from Hebrew scriptures, is a lion, the Lion of Judah, a ferocious lion versus a meek lamb. So why is it that John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God? He's actually foreshadowing Jesus' purpose here on earth when he will ultimately sacrifice himself, become the Lamb of God, the new Paschal Lamb of God, that new sacrifice of the new covenant. So how is it that the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world? You know, some say that Jesus takes away the sins of the world by paying a debt or by getting our punishment for the sins. But you know, those answers are really a cop-out. They, they take away our accountability for our sins. As Catholics, we believe that the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world by transforming us through the sacrifice. That when we receive the sacrifice, the Eucharist, we are transformed. And it helps us in our struggle against sin. So sin is missing the mark. And the Eucharist provides us that grace to help us to hit the mark. But it is a constant struggle. We're constantly struggling against sin. And Jesus provides the grace through the sacrament of the Eucharist, through his sacrifice on the cross that causes us to change, allows us to change, gives us the motivation to change our ways. And so we move away from sin. We move more towards the mark. We, it is always a constant struggle in our lives to move away from sin, both sins of commission and sins of omission, both those things that we do and those things that we don't do. We need to constantly be recalibrating our actions to move towards the mark. St. Ignatius required his Jesuits to pause two or three times a day to pray the examine to examine their conscience, to look at the presence of Christ in their life, to look at their actions throughout the day and see those times when they are moving towards Christ and those times when they're moving away from Christ. Let us hear what the South African uh, Jesuits have to say about the examine. The examine is a simple but powerful technique of prayerful reflection. Experience alone does not teach us much. It is when we reflect on our experience that we really begin to learn. The examen is a practice developed by St. Ignatius of Loyola around 500 years ago. It can help us see God's hand at work in our daily lived experience. It is a simple prayer that has the capacity to transform our lives by helping us become more aware. After the Mass, we'll be passing out a brochure that... Uh, provides the step-by-step -step actions you need to uh, pray the examine. Uh, we hope that you'll start making that a regular part of your day, to stop once a day or even just once a week and to pray the examine. We'll also send out on Flocknote uh, some resources out on the internet that you can go to that'll help you in praying the examine. Make the examine a daily part of your life. This week, uh, SSJU and SSJ Academy return. SSJU is our classes for adults. SSJ Academy are our fun classes for uh, the, the youth in our life. The SSJU this week on January 23rd will cover the rules of discernment given to us by St. Ignatius and show us how we can use those rules to discern the mission that God has given us in our life. Next week on January 30th, we'll talk about discerning the gifts and talents that God has given us, using those gifts and talents to fulfill that mission that God is calling us to. And then the following week, on February 6th, we'll have a holy hour during the time of SSJU 
a time of adoration where we can put to practice some of the rules of discernment that we've learned from St. Ignatius to discern how God is calling us as we reflect in front of the Blessed Sacrament.